Over the course of this video, we will present a general overview of molten salt reactors and how they work. More specifically, we will discuss the structure, properties, and processing differences between molten salt reactors and conventional light water nuclear reactors, and how these differences indicate great potential for this relatively untested renewable energy source. Fossil fuels are diminishing at an incredible rate, with some estimating that we would exhaust our reserves by the 22nd century. In addition, the burning of fossil fuels has a large carbon footprint, with an estimated release of 38.2 billion tons of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. However, nuclear energy has almost no carbon footprint. One uranium pellet carries enough energy as one ton of coal, or 120 gallons of oil. It is not affected by severe weather and provides electricity 24-7. Molten salt reactors are considered Generation 4 nuclear reactors due to the fact that they are close to being commercially applicable and are being developed for that purpose. It is considered a next generation reactor due to its ability to more efficiently burn nuclear fuel as well as its inherent safety. A molten salt reactor, or MSR for short, is a nuclear reactor in which the fuel is dissolved in a molten salt instead of being in a solid state. MSRs are made of a reactor core, a chemical processing plant, safety dump tanks, multiple heat exchangers, and an electricity producing power cycle. The reactor core, where fission occurs, is neutron dense, where the molten fuel and coolant mixture flows through. There are exit pipes from the core, where the molten salt flows through a heat exchanger, which, when combined with another heat exchanger and a power generation cycle, produces electricity. The fuel then flows through a chemical processing plant, where fission products are removed and the fuel salt is added. This is sent back to the reactor core. During transport, the fuel passes through a region with a freeze plug and dump tanks. This is a preventive measure for overheating. The fuel used in liquid fluoride thorium reactors is composed of lithium fluoride and thorium tetrafluoride. These salts are at the eutectic composition, shown on the face diagram, to allow for lowered working temperatures. Liquid salt fuels are inexpensive and require significantly less processing compared to solid fuels, such as fuel rods, which require manufacturing. Traditional fuel pellets are created using uranium, mined from the ground, which is in the rare isotopic form U-235 and comprised of only 0.7% of the mined uranium. This low percentage requires it to be enriched through complex chemical and physical processes. In addition, fuel rods, as well as shielding, need to be fabricated, extending the process duration. In a molten salt reactor, thorium is the basis of the entire reaction. Thorium is a much more abundant material which changes into isotopic form TH233 after absorbing a neutron, which after some time decays to fissile uranium-233. Once the reaction starts, thorium will absorb neutrons from surrounding fissile material that are burning up. The on-site chemical plant can then extract the thorium, wait till it decays to uranium, and insert it back into the reactor as a fissile material. One benefit of having a liquid fuel is the ease of waste removal. In traditional reactors, nuclear fuel is stored in rods submerged in water. In order to replenish the fuel, the reactor must be completely shut down as the containment chamber is highly pressurized to keep the coolant from vaporizing. On the other hand, if fuel is dissolved in a liquid at atmospheric pressure, the liquid can be pumped out of the container into an on-site processing plant and then be sent back to the reactor. During this processing, fuel can be added and waste removed. Since nuclear reactors generate huge amounts of energy at a given time, shutting one down for months at a time to replace fuel rods is a gigantic waste of time and money. Another important benefit is the presence of a low pressure system. This allows for more effective safety precautions, as a leak in the reactor won't automatically result in a large increase in volume or an explosion. This happens as the boiling point of the coolant and system is much higher than the operating temperature, as compared to conventional reactors which use water which boils at 100 degrees. In the past, issues have occurred where uncontrolled reactions have led to nuclear meltdowns, such as the Fukushima disaster in Japan. Compared to conventional reactors, the rate of fission using molten salt is inherently stable. If a molten salt reactor gets too hot for safe operation, the freeze plug, normally kept solid by a cooling fan, will melt. 
This allows the liquid fuel salts in the reactor to flow into the emergency dump tanks, where they cannot continue fission. Because the emergency dump tanks are kept cold, the hot molten salt undergoes large undercooling and solidifies rapidly. This self-regulation prevents uncontrolled reactions. In addition, although the operating temperature is relatively high, the melting point of the molten salt and fuel is relatively low. Thus, if a leak does occur, the substance will solidify along with the radioactive material, preventing major contamination of the surrounding area. Another problem with conventional reactors is the need for maintenance. With solid fuel, fission in the rods releases gas which in turn expands the material and causes it to crack due to pressure. The more the rods crack, the more frequently they need to be replaced, which is both inefficient and costly, while at the same time increasing nuclear waste. Liquid fuel is essentially unaffected by gas release as it is easily siphoned from the liquid in the chemical processing plant due to differences in densities. In addition to fracturing, as the amount of fissile material in fuel rods decrease, the efficiency and energy output drops. This leads to fuel rods requiring replacement frequently, but not before all the fuel in the rods has been exhausted. The result from this is nuclear waste that still contains a high amount of fissile radioactive material which can remain radioactive for thousands of years. In a molten salt reactor, the fuel is continuously added and waste removed through the chemical plant, allowing a much higher percentage of fissile material to be used. This process output wastes with comparatively short half-lives of around 300 years rather than the thousands of years current nuclear waste takes to decay. In this application, Structure, processing, and properties are intimately related. The production of the fuel and coolant mixture is a direct application of processing due to the eutectic composition of the solution. This leads to a relatively low temperature molten solution as the structure. This in turn allows for a variety of desirable properties such as a low pressure system, self-regulation, and ease of handling which were described.